walking on a pink cloud. So I asked her last night at her graduation prom, and she said yes. We're going to be married in August. Wow, married? She's just finishing high school, and you still have two years at the university. That's a tough road, Larry. What are you going to use for money? Well, Sue's folks were going to pay something to put her in junior college here in town for two years. So we'll have that. But instead of going to college, she'll get a full-time job in campus town. Say she doesn't care anymore about education. So with that, and my part-time job, we'll get by. Uh-oh. You're soon now. You two probably want to be alone. <laughs> oh, Sue, honey. Oh, Larry. Well, what's the matter? It's the folks, they... We had a terrible scene. I couldn't sleep a wink. They don't approve. They say I'm too young. They want me to finish two more years of schooling before I even get engaged. Oh, Larry. Oh, buck up, sweetheart. They can't stop me. Relax. And act normal till after your graduation next week. Then I can borrow Phil's car. Out to Greenville. There's a justice of the peace down there. Will he lope, honey? But, Larry, I wanted a church wedding. And all the parties and showers for me, too. And my folks, that would break Mom's heart. Well, we're the ones that are getting married, not your folks. I don't know, Larry. I read somewhere that a marriage without parents' approval has two strikes on it from the start. But if eloping's the only way... No, maybe it isn't. Maybe you could convince your folks that you should get married. But how, Larry? How? Uh, say, I'll bet we could get some advice from the marriage counselor over at the church. His name is Hall. Phil told me about him. He teaches a course in marriage and family living at the college. Do you think he could help me with my folks? Well, it's worth a try, isn't it? My folks don't understand the way I feel. So that's the story, Mr. Hall. Do you think you can help us get married? Why, I'm in favor of marriage. In fact, I spend a good deal of my time helping people to get ready for marriage. Now, let's see. You've known each other for... Three months, one week, two days, and uh, 17 hours. <laughs> and you're 18, Sue? And 19, Larry? Have either of you ever been in love before? Well, but not like this. This is the real thing. Yes. I had a chum in college who had the real thing with eight successive girls. Oh. Well, it's all right if you have it, fine. It's a very important factor in building a happy marriage. But tell me, how do you know it's real love, the kind you can get married on? Why, ever since I first met Larry, I haven't wanted to date anyone else. The whole three months now. And besides, I haven't even had one quarrel with him. No quarrels? Why not? No differences of opinion, or no opinions. What do you talk about on your dates? Oh, movies and popular songs. Orchestras, and dancing. And... Larry's chosen profession, engineering? No, I don't understand any of it. I don't like to hear about it. Why, well, Sue, honey, I didn't know you felt that way. Well, it seems you two may have some things to talk over and settle. Might well ask yourself some questions before you get too serious about marriage. Well, uh, what do you mean? What sort of questions? Well, questions for Cupid. You might say he should ask them before he fires those arrows. We call this Cupid's checklist. First, do you have similar backgrounds, similar bases for your ideals and standards? Second, are you real friends, comrades, pals, through thick and thin? And third, do you both understand marriage? Oh, not the kind in most movies or most popular songs, but the real everyday kind of marriage, between real people. Do you understand it? Well, golly, Mr. Hall, I don't know the answers to all those questions. I just know that I'm in love with Sue. Is that bad? No, that's good. 
Sure. And it's good when you recognize that you don't know the answers. It's a good sign. I don't know. I think we're friends. And maybe we can understand marriage, but backgrounds, how do they affect getting married? Well, come over here a minute. Perhaps I can show you what I mean. What's that? I call it a marriage development board. It represents the psychological distance between a husband and a wife from the time they are born until they die. Yeah, but what does it all mean? Well, let's set it up for you and Sue. When you are born, you inherit a great many differences from your parents. That's part of your background. That makes sense, all right. Now, as you grow up, you each develop separate and unique personalities. Your mental growth. Your emotional outlook. Your standards and ideals. Larry, your distinctly masculine outlook on life, and Sue, your feminine way of looking at things, your capacities to love and be loved. In these and many other ways, you each acquire a background. So that when you first met, you were probably farther apart. Probably more distinct individuals than when you were born. But I don't want to marry a girl like me. I want to marry a man like him. <laughs> <laughs> so even though we're close together here, we don't know how far apart we are there. That's right. When you two met, there was probably an early physical reaction. A romantic attraction that pulled you together. A love appeal that hits you sort of... Boing! <laughs> How did you know? Well, it happened to me. It happens in some degree to most couples who become happily married. But it takes more than this boing. For you see, if you're too far apart psychologically, if your backgrounds are not similar enough, it can cause a great deal of argument and unhappiness until... It's gone. Where'd it go? That's what you'll be saying about your romantic love if these other things cause a breakup. No, sir. This is forever with Larry and me. Fine, I hope so. But don't you think it's wise to take time to find out how much strain these differences might put on your romantic love? But there isn't any time. Larry's going away in a couple of months. Yes. Did you two ever see these figures on length of engagement? and how it relates to chances for happiness in marriage. No. Two separate studies showed the chance for happiness improves with a longer engagement period. It's fair for six months, better for a year or two years. Is that because there's a better chance to find out some of these differences and become real friends? Yes, a chance to find out if your relationship will wear well. Yes, but can't we settle these differences after we're married? And if you aren't successful, before you become too deeply involved, find out if the distance might turn out to be too great. Here's another angle that should interest you both. How age when married affects the chance for happiness. You can see that the chances are better after the man reaches 21 or so. And the same study showed that the woman must be 19 or 20 before the chances for happiness begin to be good. But why? What's the difference between 19 and 21 or so? The difference is in you the next few years. You, Larry, and you, Sue. Young people seem to change and mature in these years from 18 to 21 or even later. So that a person you might marry at 18 or so will seem like quite a different person to you a few years later. Gee, hon, it doesn't take an engineer to see that we're on the bad part of the curve of these graphs. All of them. Yeah. I see our chances aren't so good now. What are we going to do? I thought you were going to help us get married. I believe I can. I think you two have a lot of what it takes to build a successful marriage. And yet, you wouldn't try to plan and build a house in three months, would you? Shouldn't a marriage have better planning? If you two are going to build a successful family team that will last for 40 or 50 years, how long do you think it should take to get ready for it? All right. How do 
we know when we've done it? When the two of you are ready for marriage, you'll sense a new feeling between you. The two of you united as a pair. Thinking as one unit, acting as one unit, in the building of a marriage and a new family. Your sense of paredness shows up in the way in which you consider what's best for the pair of you, over what you want individually for yourself. Think how often you speak of things from my point of view instead of ours. How often you say, I want, instead of we want. I guess it wasn't my folks that needed convincing, it's me. I mean, it's us, isn't it, Larry? Yeah, we'll say. And so, in terms of the checklist for Cupid, Larry and Sue began to examine their readiness for marriage. Do we have similar backgrounds? Do we agree on our religious beliefs? And have the same feelings about religion in general? Do we have the same ideals and standards and tastes? Do we enjoy the same friends? Do we share the same interests? And what about Sue and me? Are we real friends? Do we have a real happiness in being together? Talking? Or just doing nothing together? Does each of us really want to make the other one happy? Do we have a real interest in each other and a sense of pride in each other? Do we know each other's peculiarities? Do we both have a spirit of give and take? Can we quarrel and, and come out of it with something better than before? Do we really understand marriage? Do we understand the social aspects of marriage? Have we an understanding about money matters and how important it is to have enough money to do more than just get by? Do we understand the physical aspects and the family side of marriage? Do we know how much work there is to a marriage? And overall, do we have a feeling of paired unity? Those questions were helping us to find out just how strong our relationship was and helping us to strengthen it. So the next time we called on Mr. Hall, we realized how much he had been helping us. He had been talking for some time with our parents and there seemed to be general agreement that Sue and I now had a much better idea of just how much psychological distance still separated us. If you want to, Sue, your mother and I, we can make arrangements for you to begin school at State U this fall with Larry instead of at the junior college. If we want to. Then if you two get along, in school that is, if you continue to reduce the psychological distance, then perhaps at Christmas vacation or at Easter vacation, we'll be glad to announce the engagement. Oh, Larry! And then we can be married when Larry graduates in two years. I mean, one year and ten months and three days. Yes, if the engagement period gives you two the opportunity to work things out together. If you both still want it. I guess you might say, we're engaged to be engaged. And Mr. Hall, I... We both want to thank you. And say, now do you think we have anything more than... Boing? Why, yes, I think you've made a good start towards getting ready for marriage.